Welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. Well, it's not the first time and it probably won't be the last. Time Magazine's November 3rd cover story takes aim at public school teachers. The story inside breaks little new ground. Tenure rules and unions mean you can't fire bad public school teachers. But here are some millionaires who have solved the problem. Well, time misses the mark in a few ways. We get anecdotes about bad behaving teachers, but we don't hear from any actual teachers. And time gets a range of think tank analysts to weigh in, one from a conservative think tank and then another from an entirely different conservative think tank. And they present a rather generous view of the millionaire reformer. He's an unassuming father of three who clearly prefers a world of concrete facts to taking sides. So it's millionaire reformers and their just-the-facts data-heavy method to weed out bad teachers. Except, wait a second, in the very last paragraphs of the piece, they tell us that their favored methodology, what's known as value-added modeling, might not do what they say it does. Academic research organizations now advise against using it to determine teacher quality. So does the Department of Education. Even the Gates Foundation, which has spent millions of dollars promoting it, is stepping back. In journalism, this is called burying the lead, putting the most important information at the very end. Time actually has a story here. Education reformers are pushing a discredited fix for public schools. Too bad that's not the story they wrote. On October 26th, ABC This Week correspondent Jonathan Carl had a friendly chat with George P. Bush, currently running for Texas Land Commissioner, but maybe running for bigger things soon. It wasn't all softballs. They did manage to talk about the climate crisis. Unfortunately, the setup from the ABC reporter was lacking. And he attempts to stake out a middle ground on climate change. Well, sort of. How big a threat is uh, climate change to the Texas coastline? The Texas coastline is impacted by, by rising sea levels. Uh, and again, the question is whether or not that's, that's man-made, and I'll leave that to the scientists. But you don't doubt that human activity contributes to climate change? Well, we'll see in terms of the science, in terms of the, there's, there's a wide a range that has been discussed. And again, I'm not a scientist by any stretch, but everywhere from, you know, no impact at all to 100 percent. If we're trying to establish the middle ground on climate change, it's definitely not, I'm not a scientist, but maybe humans impact rising sea levels, but maybe they don't. Carl is framing a scientific question as a matter of political positioning. It may be true that Bush's evasive response is the middle compared to the full-on climate change denial Carl has heard from other Republicans, but that's a dangerously skewed way of looking at the issue. Climate change is rarely discussed on Sunday talk shows. It'd be nice if when they did discuss it, the conversation was less about political posturing and more reality-based. Well, finally, there's no shortage of complaints when it comes to how corporate media cover elections. But there's one line of thinking that calls out for some response. The idea that the public hates Congress, but still reelects the same people every time. We hear so much about how Americans are disgusted with Washington. <laughs> They're, you know, they don't want it. They don't like the people right. who are serving here in the Congress. They don't like what's going on at the White House. The media focusing on all these close races. But Amy, when it comes right down to it, we looked at it again today, 90 percent of the members of the House and the Senate are coming back. The New York Times put it like this. Voters seem poised to return more than 90 percent of incumbents in both parties to a Congress they say they loathe. Expressing disapproval is fashionable, but Americans still rely on the institutions they disapprove of. But we should be careful not to confuse the public with the people who vote in midterm elections. The latter represent about 35 percent of the eligible voting population. Non-voters, according to some research, are a distinct group. They tend to be poor, Democratic-leaning, and they think there should be more choices available than the two major parties. Campaign journalism might be a lot more interesting if they talked about and to these citizens instead of treating them as though they simply don't matter. I'm Janine Jackson. Thanks for watching FAIR TV.